everyone, it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video I'm going to show you how to crochet the Peppermint Frost Cowl. I love this cowl. It's a brand new pattern release. I love the look of it, but it's our last Christmas in July brand new pattern release for this year. But of course you can make it any time of year and you can change the colors anytime you want to. I think these two little pom-poms on this tie is what really makes this cowl special. The cowl measures about nine inches across and it's about 34 inches around. You can find those multiples on our free pattern and I'll put that pattern link down in the notes underneath this video. To make the peppermint frost cowl, you're going to need two colors of yarn, about three ounces of two different colors. Now I did this in a solid red and white, and this is just your basic acrylic medium weight number four yarn. This one is Red Heart Super Saver. This one is I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. And for today's demonstration, because red is really difficult to film, it can be a little too bright, I'm going to use this beautiful green. And this green is your basic Red Heart Super Saver, and the color is tree green. That's white, and this is cherry red. But you don't have to use solids if you don't want to. I think this would be beautiful with maybe a solid and a stripe, or a solid and a variegated, you can use your imagination. Just make sure you have a total of six ounces, three ounces of two different colors. We're going to be stitching with our eye hook. The eye hook is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle for weaving in those ends, and you'll need a good sharp pair of scissors because we are going to be making two pom-poms. We're going to begin by making 28 foundation double crochets. We'll start with our slip knot and chain four chains. Yarn over, go in the fourth chain from the hook and pull up a loop. Yarn over and only go through the first loop. Yarn over, go through the next two, yarn over and go through the next two. Yarn over, go in that chain that we made, yarn over and only go through the first loop. Yarn over, go through the next two, yarn over and go through the next two. If you've never done a foundation double crochet before, what you're doing is you're doing your chain row and your first row of, do of double crochets at the same time. Yarn over, go in the chain because that's the first stitch that we made. Pull up a loop, yarn over and only go through the first loop. That's the chain that was made. Yarn over, go through the next two, yarn over and go through the next two. Now we created the double crochet. Our chain three counts as our first and now I have four because one, two, three, four. And I need 28 foundation double crochets. Let's do a few more so you understand how to do it. Yarn over, go in that chain that we made, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through the first loop. Now we're going to just finish our double crochet. Foundation double crochet. And you need 28 foundation double crochets. I have stitched my 28 foundation double crochets. I'm going to chain three. My chain three counts as my first double crochet and I'm going to stitch one double crochet in the next two stitches. Chain two, I'm going to skip the next two stitches and then stitch one double crochet in the next three. One, two, and three. 
Now we're going to chain two and repeat. Skip two and one double crochet in the next three. Chain two, skip two, and one double crochet in the next three. Chain two, skip two, and one double crochet in the next three. Chain two, skip two, and one double crochet in those last three stitches. There we go, got to get in that chain three. And we'll go ahead and chain three. And you should have three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, one, two, three, four in the middle, chain two and three. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six sets of three double crochets and one, two, three, four, five sets of chain two in between. And that's how your row two should look. Now for row three, we're going to take out that chain three because we're going to change colors. I'm going to bring in my second color, which is my green. There we go. And I'm only going to chain one. We're not going to cut off our color one, which is my white. What we're going to do is we're going to be changing colors every two rows. So we're going to trail those colors up the side of our cowl. All right, so we're going to turn our work. We're going to stitch a single crochet in the first stitch. Our chain one does not count as a stitch. Now we're going to stitch what's called a long single crochet or a spike stitch. We're going to take our crochet hook and go down underneath this stitch, pull our thread from behind and bring it up, and then finish our single crochet. Then we'll single crochet in the next stitch. It's called a spike, or because we're doing single crochets, it's a long single crochet. We're going to stitch two single crochets in the chain two um, space. We'll single crochet in the next double crochet, and then we'll stitch a long single crochet or spike stitch. and then one single crochet in the next double crochet. Two single crochets in the chain two space, and then we'll repeat this. Single, long spike stitch, well actually spike stitch or long single crochet, <laughs> single crochet in the next, and then two single crochets in that chain two space and we'll repeat this across. Now the key to getting your spike stitches to lay nice is not to pull it too tight. You don't want it drooping, but you also don't want it pulling up that double crochet stitch that you're stitching around. And it might take a little bit of practice but it's a lovely stitch and looks beautiful on this cowl. So just gently pull it around. Make sure it's not drooping and not pulling. All right, two single crochets in this last chain two space. Single crochet long single crochet or spike stitch, and then single crochet in that last stitch, and then we will go ahead and chain three. Now let's take a look at that. 
and you may notice that it looks a little bit like it's pulling over on that middle double crochet. It's totally fine. That's the way it's going to look. And this is how your third row should look. Single, long, single, and two singles. Repeat and end with single, long, single. We chained three. We're going to turn our work. Our chain three counts as our first. So we're going to double crochet in the next two stitches. One and two. We're going to chain two. We'll skip those two single crochets and then we'll stitch one double crochet in the next three stitches. There we go. And we'll repeat this across. Chain two, skip two, one single crochet in the next three stitches. Chain two, skip two, one double crochet in the next three stitches. And I think once you learn how the repeats work, you'll see that this is not a complicated pattern at all, and it stitches up quickly and really pretty. One, two, and then one double crochet in the last three stitches. One, two, and three. All right, so let's take a look at it. So it looks like what we did on row two. Three double crochets, chain two, and repeat and end with three double crochets. Now for row five, we're going to bring in our color one. So we're going to bring that in, snug that down, and chain one. And just a reminder, the chain one when we turn does not count as a stitch, but all the chain threes when we turn count as a double crochet. All right, now we'll get the green one out of the way, and we're going to just stitch with our white. And we're going to repeat what we did on row three. We're going to single crochet, and then we're going to do that long single crochet. So we're going to go down, and what I'm doing is I'm going in between those two stitches of that long single crochet of the previous row. And it gives it sort of a V-stitch appearance, and it looks really pretty. So we'll place two single crochets in the chain two space, single crochet, long single crochet, and single crochet. Two single crochets in the chain two space, and repeat, single crochet, long single crochet, and single crochet. Two single crochets in the chain two space. And repeat. And remember, to get that look, you need to go right in between those two pieces of yarn from the long single crochet from the previous row of long single crochets. All right, two single crochets. There we go. And we'll finish up with two single crochets in that chain two space, single crochet, long single crochet. It's a little more difficult on the end because you've got to make sure it doesn't slide off the edge. All right, and now we're going to chain three. And so this is the front of your cowl. We stitched those 
long single crochets in between the two threads of the previous long single crochet. I do want to show you the back and you'll notice when you do that that these will look like they're next to it on the back of your work. So don't let that bother you. That's on the inside, but I wanted you to see that so you didn't think that you're doing anything wrong. That's exactly the way it should look. And that's the way row five should look. So now for row six, we're going to turn our work again and we're going to repeat what we did down here. Our, our chain three counts is our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet in the next two, one and two, chain two, skip those two single crochets and one double crochet in the next three stitches. Chain two, skip two, one double crochet in the next three stitches. And repeat. And we end with one double crochet in the last three stitches. And this is the back. And this is how the front looks. And I have to say, even though I did the original one in the red and white, I'm really liking the green and white. This one looks like it might be a spearmint frost instead of a peppermint frost. So we have three double crochets, chain two all the way across, and then we end with three double crochets. And so now that you understand how the repeat and the color changes work, you're going to repeat rows three through six, three, four, five, and six, and you're going to repeat those rows for 29 more rows. And you'll alternate every other row with your stitches of your long and with your single crochet and your double crochets, and then you'll change colors every two rows. And you'll do that for 29 more rows or more if you want a longer cowl. Remember, this cowl will get you a cowl that's about 34 inches around because we're stitching the long way. So just to repeat, you're going to repeat rows three and four and five and six. You'll repeat that for 29 more rows and you'll alternate row three, row four, row five, and row six, and you'll change colors every two rows. So basically you're doing a row of single crochet with the long in the center of each of the double crochets and then a row of three and two. And you'll do that alternating every two rows with your colors. So this is the way that your cowl will look. Whether you're using green and white, red and white, or whatever colors that you have chosen, you'll have two rows of one color, two rows of the next, alternating those rows of single crochet with the long single crochet, and then the double crochet with two in between. And this is how it will look. Making sure that you put those long single crochets in between the two pieces of yarn, the little V looking, so that you get what looks like long V stitches that go all the way through the pattern. Isn't it pretty? All right, now, once your cowl is as long as you want it, we need to deal with that side that has those yarns where we carried them across. And we're going to single crochet evenly across that row. And I'll show you with my swatch how to do that. Once your cowl is as long as you want it, you want to make sure that you end 
on a row that has the three, two, three, two, not on your single crochet row with your long single crochets. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll cut off the color two, and then we'll work down the side of that cowl. Chain one, and then we'll turn. And the easiest way to do that is to try to work your single crochets in stitches and not the holes. And when you come to these, you're going to go in and go around and catch that where we trailed that down the side around so that it's underneath your single crochets. And there is not a set number of single crochets you have to have on the edge. You just want to make sure that you stitch around those ends and it looks real pretty. I'm going to grab my other one so you can see how it looks on the cowl. So here's the edge of the peppermint frost cowl where I've stitched the single crochets all the way down, catching all those edges so I don't have anything sticking out on the edge where I carried my yarn. Here I am at the end and I'm just going to continue across trying to catch all those yarn edges so it looks nice and neat. I'm going to bring that one in a little closer. Get a stitch right in there. There we go. Because the key to having your cow lay pretty is to put your stitches close but not too close. Don't let them bunch up. Don't let them be too far apart. And again, try to get in those stitches and not the holes, if at all possible. You know, there might be a place where you have to put it in the hole, but you really want to try to get it in the side of the stitch so you don't have a big gaping opening on the side. And now I'm to the bottom where we started with our row of foundation double crochets. And I'm going to stitch right up to the edge. I'm going to stitch a little chain one just to hold it. I'm going to go ahead and clip that one where we weave that off. And this is how the edge of your cowl will look. Now we're not going to do any stitching on this end. It looks really nice. There isn't anything that we have to do. And so the next thing we want to do is join the two ends of our cowl together. So I want to stitch my cowl together on the ends and I want to do it with the inside out. This is the inside. I want it on the outside because we're going to stitch it together and then turn it over. So we've got our two ends together and we're just going to slip stitch it closed. So we'll go in the first stitch on this side and the first stitch on this side and we'll just slip stitch. And we'll stitch it all the way together, working all the way across. And you will be stitching in those chains. You can go around them if you want to, but I prefer when I'm sewing it together to go in the stitch itself because stitching a slip stitch, you want it to look nice and neat. All right, so I'm just going to continue working across, stitching the front to the back. with slip stitches. And again, I have the wrong side out and the right side in. We're going to stitch it together and then flip it over. All right, see? I'm stitching it together. with slip stitches. I have stitched the ends together with slip stitches across. I'm going to cut that yarn 
and we'll weave that in with our needle in just a few minutes, but I want to show you what it looks like when we flip it over, because this is the right side out. We'll put that string back in so we don't see it, but this is the way that your cow will look. Isn't that beautiful? And here's our seam. It looks nice and neat, but we want to add that little tie and those pom-poms to make it look even more festive. I have two pom-poms here that I made. I used the red and the white in my pom-poms, and they're kind of a loose pom-pom. They're not a real tight pom-pom. Now, if you want to know how to make a pom-pom, I did a video a couple of years ago, and I'll link that video down in the notes underneath as well as put a link up here. So if you want it, there's several different ways you can make pom-poms and you can use that video if you want to. Uh, the best way really is just to use a pom-pom maker because they're super easy. You can make them as big and thick as you want or maybe light and loosey like these. I like them like this for this particular project. You can also get some fuzzy pom-poms that are made out of faux fur um, that are already made or you can use faux fur and make some also. There's lots of different ways to make pom-poms, but you're going to need two. We're going to make a tie to attach our pom-poms onto when we put it onto our cowl. And we're going to be using one strand of each of our colors. We're going to begin with our slip knot, and we're going to chain about 50 chains. This isn't a real long tie, and if you want your tie longer, like maybe you want to tie it into a bow, you can make it as long as you want to. I'm going to be chaining 50 chains using two strands of my yarn, one of each color, and I am still using my eye hook. I've chained my chain of 50 chains and again, it's not real long. If you want it longer, of course, you can chain more. We're going to cut our yarn and tie that off. I'm going to tie a knot right in the end of both ends so that it sits right on the end of that chain. And that's just going to keep it from coming undone. All right, now we're going to attach those two pom-poms. And the way I do that is I take the two strands of the pom-pom and two strands of the end of my tie, and I put them together, and I tie a knot like this, where it twists around, and I push it in there as close as I can, and then I'll clip those ties so they blend right in with my pom-pom. Okay, so now we're going to do that on the other end. We'll grab the ties from the other pom-pom, nice and close. And if you want to, you can tie a second knot if you think you need to, but this knot holds really well. And you can always add a little dab of glue, of that fabric glue, if you feel you need it. All right, I'll give it a good snug pull, and then I'll just clip it. And that will blend in again with the pom-pom that I have. And now I have my two pom-poms attached to my tie, and I just need to put it on my cowl. So here's the cowl. Here's the tie with the pom-poms. And where we're going to put that is we're going to put that right where that seam was that we put together. All right, so I'm just going to scrunch that up. I'm going to take my two pom-poms. And it's up to you how tight you want to pull that. I don't want to pull it real tight because I want my pom-poms to sit real pretty. But I do want to gather it up a little bit. And then I'm just going to gently tie that again, pulling that pom-pom through. Making sure all the loops are out of the way. And then we can kind of snug that down like that. And so now, our cow has two pom-poms on it. Is that not the most adorable thing? <laughs> now, if you wanted your tie longer, you could always tie a bow. 
You can also add, you know, something in the center if you want it to look extra special. It's up to you. And I, I love the look of it. I think it has a really neat look with the tie and the two pom-poms. Thank you.